Ah, there we go. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you all can hear me all right. As you can see, I am uh, preaching this morning from my home office. And um, so uh, I'm really sorry that I can't be there with you. But if I was there, um, I think you all would be I'm running the other way. So um, so I'm, uh, I'm happy to be uh, keeping a safe distance. So so let me just begin by thanking Beth and Don for that wonderful, wonderful testimonial. Um, I well, first of all, I I want to say to Beth that I knew you and Don were young, but I didn't know you were quite that young. Um, but that's um, uh, so I'm delighted that you got married at the church. Um, you might want to wait until you were a little over eight years old, but I think it's I think it's wonderful. So, um, and let me also say that um, it has been a joy for me getting to know both of you and working with you on different committees. Uh, Beth and I are uh, work together on membership, and Don and I are on the stewardship steering committee. And um, the two of you are just you're so passionate about the church. And as we heard, and um, and let me also just give a shout out to. Um, Julia and Caroline, I've gotten to know both of them and was very proud to welcome Caroline as one of our new worship weavers. And, um, and uh, the, the Jager Landis family is just a, a great, great family. And we are so blessed um, by your presence and by your generosity and by all that you do. So thank you so very much. So I also wanna thank my yes. Yeah, I also want to thank my, my uh, colleague and friend, Reverend Leah, for stepping in um, today to lead uh, this morning's service. Reverend Leah has had a very, very busy week with uh, DreamQuest, and, um, and of course, she's still recovering from a broken foot, um, but uh, as, as usual, Reverend Leah just, um, just stepped up and does such a wonderful job, and let me just say um, that I want to actually second what young Ethan said a few minutes ago. I would be fine if we decided that Reverend Leah does indeed own the church. So, um, <laughs> uh, that I think that would be just fine with me. But um, but anyway, so um, so and then finally, I just want to say how joyful I am and impressed I am with all the folks who are leading and working on our uh, pledge drive stewardship campaign. Um, I have just been so impressed with the passion, with the organization, with the talent level. I don't know if you guys realize what a talented congregation you are. There is so much abundance of, of, of talent, of goodwill, uh, the EU congregation of Charlottesville has so much going for it, and um, I have just been so impressed. I want to especially, of course, thank Haley and Bob, who are doing a great, great job as our co-chairs, and um, I've certainly appreciated getting um, all of their communication, especially when I needed a nudge. Don't forget to write your letter, Reverend Tim, and um, so I certainly appreciate that, and they are just really on top of everything. So. We are just blessed with so much great leadership in this congregation. I will say that I'm especially sad not to be with you today in person because while I love being with you every Sunday on Rugby Road, I have a special place in my heart for, um, for Pledge Drive, for Pledge Sunday, for Canvas kickoffs. Now, I know you're like, okay, now he's really gone over the bend. And, um, and maybe he's uh, uh, clouded by COVID fog. There's a little truth in that. But I really do love a Sunday where we focus on, on generosity, where we focus on what's important to us and what we're, um, what we're, what we're hoping to, to, to do today and to become in the future. And um, so what I wanna do is, begin by sharing a little story with you. And um, it's one of my favorite stewardship stories. And it's one that I personally really resonate with. This story is told by 
uh, Reverend Dr. Rebecca Parker, if any of you are, many of you are familiar with the name Rebecca Parker. Um, Rebecca Parker is actually an ordained Methodist minister and the retired um, president of uh, one of our Unitarian Universal Seminaries, uh, Star King School for the Ministry in Berkeley, California. And I think Re uh, Rebecca Parker is one of the truly um, deep and uh, profound thinkers um, in Unitarian Universalism. And um, now this story she shares in an, is in a uh, short essay she wrote a few years ago in which she talks about her time as serving um, a Methodist congregation um, before she kind of made her way to Unitarian Universalism. And what she, what she does in the story is recounts um, one of her congregants who I'm gonna call Jack, and she recall, recounts the story of when he stood up just as Beth and Don did a few minutes ago and shared his stewardship testimony on why he decides to pledge to pledge to that Methodist congregation. Now, what's interesting about this is that Jack's testimonial begins by saying that when he was a younger man, that religion for him was what he had been taught. And what he had been taught was that religion was about obedience. It was about doing what you were told. And also, he had the feeling that making a religious commitment was about following the rules, doing what you're supposed to do. And if you didn't follow the rules, you might be judged. You might even be seen as a sinner, judged not just by the church, but by God. Now, as Jack grew older and his faith matured, his reasons for making a financial commitment to that congregation also changed. You see, his religious beliefs and convictions became less about obedience or fear, which the more he thought about seemed to be a pretty bad and even harmful reason even to be part of a religion or a religious community. Instead, Jack came to see his financial commitment to the church as being an essential way in which he lived his life with meaning and purpose. And in this essay, Rebecca Parker actually paraphrases um, Jack's <laughs> testimonial that day. And let me just share some of that with you. He says, if I didn't support my congregation financially and in other ways, I feel like I would be saying that I am a person who has little to give and whose only concern are my own needs. But who I am is just the opposite. I am a person who has something to give. I am a person who has received abundantly from life. I am a person who wants his life to matter and whose life has meaning because I am connected to and care about many things larger than myself. My congregation is most certainly one of those things. And if I did not pledge and did not commit myself to its well being and to its mission in the world, I would lose sight of who I am, of what I care most about, and of how I want to live today and to be remembered when my time is over. That's what my religion and my church mean to me. Now I have to say that Jack's explanation of why he gives, why he pledges to his religious community has always resonated with me. Like all of you, my family and I we have bills to pay, mortgage payments, many financial obligations to meet. But those bills and obligations are about what we owe. Our pledge to the UU Congregation of Charlottesville is about what we love. We believe passionately in the values of this congregation and of Unitarian Universalism. 
We believe in the new mission you are creating and in the life changing ministries that you already have and those that and those that we are building together. We believe passionately in the love that is at the center of Unitarian Universalism and of this congregation. And we want to see that love continue to grow. We want it to grow deeper and we want it to reach farther. We want to see this congregation open its doors even wider to welcome all who are seeking a community of love rather than judgment curiosity and questioning rather than a creed, and hope and compassion rather than hate or exclusion. This year, Carol and I are increasing our pledge by 20% because we believe in all of you. Every day, every day, we see you reaching out to help those in need. We see you deepening your spirits and growing your souls. We see you reaching out to one another when your hearts are hurting or heavy. And we see you working to help repair a broken and hurting world, a world that is broken by every ism you can imagine, racism and sexism and homophobia and transphobia, ageism, ableism, you name it. And let's not, of course, forget environmental devastation that is putting our planet in peril. So I invite you to join with us, join with Beth and Don, with Reverend Leah, in making a financial commitment to the UU Congregation of Charlottesville. If you are a current pledger, meaning you have an, uh, you made a pledge last year, I hope you will follow Don's advice and, and please increase your pledge. If you can, we'd love for you to increase it by at least 10% or more. And if you were making your very first pledge to the EU Congregation of Charlottesville, congratulations. Please be as generous as you can. And we are so delighted that you are sharing sacred ground with us. So you've already heard many invitations to the social hall for the big kickoff uh, soup. And, uh, and I think maybe there's gonna be cake. And I don't know if popcorn today, I'm not there to be able to enjoy that part with you. But I do hope that you will, when you come into the social hall, that you will go up to the tables where your pledge forms are and get your pledge form, fill it out and turn it back in. We have so much excitement in this congregation and there is so much that we are doing well together. You know, friends, so often it feels as if the world is indeed moving in the wrong direction and that we almost feel powerless sometimes to do anything about it. But there is something we can do. We can offer our love and our generosity to a congregation and a religion that seeks to build a better world, a world of love and compassion, of justice and fairness and peace for all people and for the planet. That's the path, that's the vision, that's the journey we are making together and that we are building here at the UU Congregation of Charlottesville. Join us, together we build. Thank you for listening and blessed be. All right, let's surprise Reverend Tim with a loud amen. You ready? One, two, three, amen. Good job, Tim.